asthmaticus where they, they're choking. You just stick a rectal in a suppository of theophylline. It helps. So the doctors know that the rectal root is a very good way to absorb medication. I don't know why they would find it so funny that coffee, which contains um, caffeine, which is a very active drug, is absorbed quickly. You know, Caffeine is actually related to theophylline, the asthma drug, and it stimulates the liver to release all its toxins. And oddly enough, when you drink coffee, it tends to suppress the liver. When you take it rectally, it stimulates parasympathetic nerves in the lower bowel that when they're turned on, feed back to the liver and within seconds cause the liver to release all its toxins. The liver basically helps both phase one, phase two detoxification systems within the liver. And with cancer patients, you know, these people are very toxic. First, they've had all kinds of toxic therapy usually before they see us. Secondly, tumors are very abnormal collections of cells, and they produce all kinds of molecules that are foreign and toxic to normal healthy tissue. It's great that the enzymes can break down a tumor, but then you get all this toxic dead tumors circulating in the bloodstream. It could overload the liver which is the body's main detoxification organ. Coffee enemas help the liver to work better, help them mobilize, neutralize, and excrete all this dead tumor waste. They can be life-saving. I have an article from the South American Journal in about 1944 where they used coffee enemas in a hospital setting to treat successfully septic shock, which in those days was like 90% deadly, and still maybe 35% of patients survive. This is when patients get so infected they start having uh, just multi-system breakdown in their bodies. Coffee enemas saved people and was in the literature. And doctors 50, 60, 70 years ago weren't so fancy that if it wasn't high-tech pharmaceutical uh, approaches that they they were just not interested. They were different. They used whatever worked. And enemas worked. And there's a long history of them. They come right out of conventional medicine. And the doctors that laugh or deride them just are ignorant of that. There's, um, you know, there's no, nothing more sad than ignorance. And in the case of coffee enemas, ignorance is widespread. So how do you do it? How do you actually physically do it? You brew, you first, you have to use organic coffee. And you have to have the caffeine. Decaf coffee won't work. It has to be caffeinated. And we have, uh, for our patients, we have organic coffee from Latin America, very clean stuff. And you brew it the way you'd normally brew coffee. You want to use a coffee maker that doesn't have aluminum in it. We use one from Cuisinart that's stainless steel, my wife and I. But there are stainless steel percolators and uh, glass strip systems. You just make it the way you'd normally brew coffee. Two tablespoons per quart is the standard starting dose that we use. And we have enema bags that our supplier provides for patients. You can get them on the Internet. There are all kinds of enema buckets and enema bags available. And we have patients, you know, it has to be body temperature. You don't want it hot. You burn yourself, not too cold. You want it body temperature and kind of lukewarm. You d we have patients, there are different theories about how to do it. We have patients, you know, lie on their left side. Gerson said the right side. We say the left side. Lubricate the rectal area, and then you insert the enema tube about 12 inches and let a pint in, and you hold it for 10 minutes, and you poop it out. And We have patients do two pints each morning, each health for 10 minutes, and then for cancer patients in the afternoon, they do another two pints, each health for 10 minutes. Four pints a day, two sessions, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Wow. And how many do you do a day yourself? I do two in the morning, 10, 10 minutes each time. And I use it productively. I, I get a lot of reading done, so it, it forces me to try and uh, be smart because you can't do anything else when you do an enema, so I do reading. I get a lot of technical reading done. So if we were thinking of a card and we talk about cleaning your oil or making sure your engine's clean, how would we relate to this procedure? A very good analogy, actually. You know, everybody who owns a car, particularly if you own a really good car, you know that oil has to be changed. Nothing destroys more cars than not changing your oil because you get all kinds of toxic debris in the, in the carburetors, and you have to change the oil regularly, and this is no different. You know, traditional peoples always had detoxification routines. They would once a year, a lot of these traditional cultures would use certain herbs and techniques to get rid of parasites, for example, um, they would do purges and fasts, and they all knew about this. They knew that there were toxins in the body. I mean, they didn't know the biochemistry, but they knew there were toxins in the body that you had to clean out just from living, and it was accepted. You know, even the Bible has, you know, in the, in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, has all kinds of instructions on detox and fasting and how to de basically detoxification. It's quite interesting, and they're very elaborate. I mean, all traditional cultures. I mean, the, the coffee enemas were used by the Egyptians, it's in the Egyptian medical writings. So they've been around for, you know, 4,000 years. So all traditional cultures accepted the fact that this daily living is going to produce noxious materials in the body and, that need, and you need help to get rid of them efficiently. And they didn't think twice about it. You know, even uh, I hear stories from people's grandparents that said, you know, we were raised, we would purge occasionally and they would do enemas. Enemas were widely accepted, you know, 100 years ago. And purges and castor oil purges and these kind of things. Uh, they were just part of the yearly routine. I have patients who say that, you know, their grandparents would have their 
have their, their, their parents purge once a year just to get rid of junk. And it was an accepted way of living, which we've forgotten in our high-tech, industrialized, synthetic food, industrial agriculture world. Don't you think a lot of people are very embarrassed about this procedure and for some reason thinking that they have to clean out a part of their body that's related to their rectum? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, you know, my attitude about that is get over it or, you know, be sick. I mean, it's, you know, it's easy. You know, my, my goal in life isn't to convince somebody they should do anything. And if people are too embarrassed to do it, don't do it. But don't, you can't be my patient. Um, you know, I've done him for 30 years. When I met Kelly, he explained it. I went to the literature. Everything he said was true. It was in the Merck Manual. He showed it to me. He said, I'm vilified because of coffee enemas. I got right out of the... He had his copy of the Merck Manual from the 1960s. He showed me where it was. I actually wrote to the, editor, the then editor of the Merck Manual and said, yeah, they were recommended for years. They had files on them. Um, you know, if somebody is vomiting when they're getting chemo, nobody gets embarrassed because they use a rectal suppository of composite. It's standard care, and patients, the nurse does it, and the patients do it. And they say, oh, this is too embarrassing. They do it because their life's at stake. Well, the coffee enemas are the same thing. You know, if patients have no problem uh, living in a toxic world and not doing anything to get rid of that junk, uh, fine with me. Now, I was once at a conference in a kind of a smart guy doctor who kind of was kind of snickering when I was talking about him is at the end of the he was very polite at the end of the conference he kind of in a confrontational tone mildly confrontational he wasn't offensive he said Dr. Gonzalez coffee enemas are completely abnormal and he just sat down and waited for me to respond and I said you know you're absolutely right and he I thought he was going to fall out of his chair he was so dumbfounded I said you're completely totally right coffee enemas are completely abnormal and when you, I pointed to him, when you make the world perfect with no pollution, then I'll stop doing them. Until that point, I'm going to keep doing them. The trouble is we live in a world that is abnormal. With the patients say, well, what do we have to do? It's not normal. Yeah, well, we were designed to live in the Western Price world, traditional cultures without pollution, eating perfect food. None of us live that way. We're loaded with toxins. Every year, pollution, I've not read that it's getting better. There are 79,000 different synthetic chemicals being used used in the U.S., most of which have never been tested for safety. And these are chemicals our livers were not designed to deal with. They didn't exist 50 years ago. We're exposed to a whole new onslaught of toxic chemicals and genetically modified food and pesticides and heavy metals that we never were exposed to before, not in the quantities today. Let alone what's in our water. Oh, geez, water. I mean, I, of course, I only recommend filtered water. Water is a disaster. Chlorine is carcinogenic. Fluoride is a poison. It's how it kills bacteria in your mouth. It poisons them. It's an enzyme poison. It knocks out pancreatic enzymes. So we're exposed to all kinds of toxins and drugs and pharmaceuticals and heavy metals and pesticides and lousy food and genetically modified food, which is toxic. And our bodies aren't designed to deal with this efficiently. You need extraordinary interventions in order to keep our bodies healthy in the world today. And when that doctor, whoever he was, can make the world perfect again, I will stop doing enemas. Until, we, until, we, until that time, as long as we live in a very abnormal toxic world, I'm going to have to do abnormal things like coffee enemas. To keep, although I, having said that, I'll also go back to my original point that all traditional cultures, even living an ideal life with perfect food and a clean environment, still did detoxifications. All the traditional cultures did. It's fascinating what you're saying. Don't you think that in terms of Chinese medicine, they say that the liver is where the action is in so many things. And yet if you're doing these coffee enemas, you're detoxing the liver. Yeah, the coffee enemas are there primarily to help the liver work better. I mean, they do help with intestinal function. They're great for constipation, but their main function is to help the liver work better. Yeah, Chinese medicine people really focus on the liver correctly. Uh, you know, they, they see it as a, certain emotions are associated with the liver, like anger. Uh, toxicity in the liver produces anger. Anger can produce toxicity in the liver. Liver toxicity can produce anger. It goes both ways. So the, the Chinese are very sophisticated as attributing s certain emotional states and disease states to different organ systems and organs, and they absolutely do focus on the liver as a key area, and it is certainly key. I mean, in Chinese medicine, I'm not an expert, but my understanding is they think the liver is more important than the heart. So they, they, it's really an important... Well, you know, we know it's got, what, 10,000 functions. It's a digestive organ, the main detoxification organ. It does all kinds of things. It's required for the processing of proteins, fats, carbohydrates. It can make blood sugar. It can release blood sugar. It can make triglycerides it can make we make cholesterol in the liver 80 percent of the body's cholesterol is made in the liver it has all these extraordinary synthetic capabilities and in addition it gets rid of drugs with the 79,000 chemicals i mentioned the liver can really do a very good job getting rid of them but trouble is we are overloading it in this day and age so the liver is key i agree there are people that would say you're going to create an imbalance to your electrolytes if you do too many enemas i want you to respond to that because that's yeah, a big one uh, yeah. 
when I was doing my research into Kelly, there were those two famous cases of people died from coffee animals. Well, you know, 7,000 people die each year from drowning. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take a bath.